So drilling down to the brain, these are two brain cells, very large, and there's dopamine just hanging around in the cell. Just hanging around. That's how we're, that's how we're built. And we have 50 billion of these. This is one cell to the other. There are, for each cell, there are like 10,000 synapses, connections to other cells. Trillions of connections inside our brain. I mean, it's pretty staggering. On one-to-one -one cell, we're looking at dopamine on this side and the dopamine receptor on the other side. Along comes methamphetamine, or cocaine. And here's what we see. We see the dopamine molecule getting secreted and hooking up to the receptor, and then getting taken back up and being stored again in the vesicle. And as you can see, there's, that's a, a pump right there. And that pump is blocked by methamphetamine and uh, uh, cocaine. What we know is that opiates, painkillers, also affect dopamine levels. Marijuana also affects dopamine levels. And alcohol, as said, it's also affect dopamine levels. And the, the key factor in the disease of addiction is how dopamine fits into the receptor site. When we ingest a substance, it causes a series of reactions, and the net effect is that this next cell fires, and thousands of cells fire, and the, the, the end result is that we have a sensation of pleasure or relief of pain. And that's what people are driven to, to acquire. Um, I want to give you a sense of the magnitude. So we're talking about the natural reward center. So think to, to the chocolate chip cookies that we had. Let's say we had no idea what was coming. We came into the room and it was like, oh, lunch. Oh, open the box, there's a chocolate chip cookie. I've never had that before. I wonder what it tastes like. Oh my god, that's where we are. We taste that cookie and we get a dopamine response. We are circuited to respond to things that are good for us. And, and what does the brain need? What, what nutrient does the brain need? It needs sugar. It doesn't need protein. It doesn't need steak. It doesn't need broccoli. It needs sugar to survive. You know, it, it, it's not good for us in the long run, but sugar, glucose, is what the brain needs. That's all it can use. So we are circuited to respond to sugar. The next day, let's say we come to this lunch a week from now, and we know Kathy's going to be involved, so we're going to have lunch, and we're going to get some of those chocolate chip cookies. And we open the box, and there's a chocolate chip cookie, and we anticipate it, but when we eat it, we don't get a dopamine response, because we already know chocolate chip cookies do. So we're circuited to monitor change. Everybody with me? The next week, we have a conference. We have a lot of conferences to plan, Kathy. We get an anticipation, but there's peanut butter cookies. And I've never had a peanut butter cookie. And it's similar but different, so I get a dopamine response. The fourth week, she has a lecture with no lunch. So I'm expecting, but I have a dopamine negative because I didn't get what I expected. Everybody there? Now, let's look at how this works with drugs. Here is the first exposure to drug, just like chocolate chip cookie. Here's the next exposure, just like chocolate chip cookie, but here's the key. I get a response to the drug because the drug causes dopamine to be secreted. The drug itself co-ops the natural reward system, and this is what craving looks like. I know every time I will take that drug, it will give me a reward. And soon it overwhelms my natural reward system, and I prefer the drug to anything else. That's a food response, that's a cocaine response in terms of dopamine. Pretty staggering stimulus.